So welcome to some games we've been playing recently. And Kim's been playing one game, I've been playing two. two. <laughs> yeah, we've been having a great amount of fun. And I'll ask you guys, what are you playing? Are you playing a brand new game that just came out? Or are you playing a game from like 20 years ago? <laughs> yeah, the strange thing for me, I'm playing a brand new game and a game from, oh my God, nearly 27 years ago. Wow. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> and because how we have it balanced, I'll talk about my game, Kim's gonna talk about hers, and then we'll finish it off with the last game I'm playing. But you know what? You can relate to the first game I'm okay, playing. Yeah. I'm playing Unicorn Overlord by Vanillaware. <laughs> a very hyped game for me. As soon as I saw this announced, it's a strategy game oh. by the guys who did Dragon's Crown, and we'll oh, get back to okay, that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they announced it, and I saw it, and I'm like, I ordered the special edition instantly. I'm like, really? gotta have that. What made you want to do it? Well, because from back in the day, I've always been a Vanillaware fan, okay. and you know, I originally played Princess Crown. This is like from 1997. It's a Japanese 1997? only. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? <laughs> And you can see similarities, even with, with this game, Princess Crown, to Unicorn Overlord. Yes, you know, the one thing with Vanillaware, they always have the style, always remains pretty much the same, even into games like Odin Sphere, wow. things like this. Yeah, look at that. Artwork. Look at that artwork. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. I could beautiful. watch a whole anime like that. I, I know, and they do such a great job with the artwork and all of that. And then me and Kim played this oh. game on the PS3 years ago. We loved this game. We the loved it. The artwork was so phenomenal. Yeah. The gameplay was great, but the artwork was so different and we, unique at the time. We would come back from work yeah. and we would yeah. play this game and I remember falling asleep. Oh yeah, there was one time you were falling asleep, I remember that. Yeah, I know because like we would play it so late. late. Yeah. and all of that, but it was great you could play together. I yes. still recommend this game. Oh, totally. You can, you can get this game really cheap on um, like PS4. You can actually upgrade it to PS5. Yeah. I recommend doing that. Me and Kim still want to go back and play we this do. game again. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's actually that good. And then, you know, just to show you the how- artwork. Like, yeah, so I know this is for Dragon's Crown. Once again, the artwork in this book is uh, absolutely, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. But this is the setup to Vanillaware and Unicorn Overlord. So I've been playing, it's a strategy game. A lot of people have been asking me, is it like you know, Fire Emblem? Okay. It, it kind of is in, in the side view combat and all of that, but it's really a lot like Ogre Battle for anybody who's played that. That game got remastered a couple of years back now. I, I recommend that game, but it's beautiful. The artwork in this game, oh my God. It's like an RTS, so you set your troops to go attack and they all move and they all start attacking yeah. on their own. But the combat is Is it good? Oh my god. Well, I guess it is. <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. Right. And really, really phenomenal. Fine job! And just the, just the artwork of all the characters, the storyline they set up, and all the different continents going on. There's a huge story going on. It's all working. And the, the scores for this game have been through the roof. Nine out of tens all oh, over the place. that's a good strategy game. Yeah, for sure. And even if you have never played a strategy game, high recommendation. The Fire Emblem series, or you know, you want something different, you want something vanillaware, right. uh, you're, you're gonna get such beautiful artwork. And it's not just the artwork, it's the animation. Caesar! Yeah, and just leveling up your characters and working on all of them and you know, adding new abilities to them all. It's very addicting, and my god, I don't know how crazy I'm gonna get into this game, but I think I'm gonna get nuts. Glory to the liberation! So while you've been playing your strategy game, I've been playing Persona 3 Reload. Look at that! I know, I know. Two games that we absolutely adore. And you know, I just want to say something. Yeah. I've done sponsored videos for both games. Oh yeah. And I gotta say, the reason why I did, because I knew these games. Because you love were, these games. Because I love these games. That's oh. why I did them. It made absolute sense for Unicorn Overlord and you know Persona 3 Reload. But you've been playing this on your own. What are your thoughts? So far, I mean, I love it. Who doesn't like Persona games? And of course for Persona, it's dark. It's a bit heavy. <laughs> But I, I enjoy it, I really do. And like, what's so dark about it is like when it comes to the dark hour, yeah. everybody turns into coffins. I know, it's very, very eerie. eerie. Yeah, yeah, right? And that's what's so great about Persona. It knows how to tap into that eeriness, mm -hmm. that, that uncomfortableness of it all. And that's what makes Persona, Persona. Nicely done, enemy eliminated. So the game itself is you and your school friends. You get together and you go to something called the tower. And within the tower, you're gonna fight all these monsters, okay? Which is fun. My only downfall about it is mm. the monsters start to look the same. 
Right. Which is kind of unfortunate because with the other Persona games that I was playing in the past, you would see the Persona itself yeah. and then you fight it. But other than that, the game play itself is so much fun. Right. And when your group comes together to fight as one, or when you all do a battle out scene, yeah. it's so phenomenal. The artwork in this game is remarkable as usual. I love it to death. However, like I said, it's just you're constantly going through the same outline over and over again. Yeah, in the for tower. sure. But what they help out in the game is you got a speed run. Yeah. So instead of just kind of like slowly going through it all, you can just kind of run through, check out some things, fight some monsters, and keep going up in the tower. Yeah. But the game of it all is that you want to reach to the top. Yes. I know, that's the thing that kind of got me with the original. I'm like, yeah. it's very repetitive. You told me about that, and I'm like, well, it makes sense for the time, right? Yeah. Because they didn't have it like how they made the new Personas, where they would yeah. change the atmosphere and everything. But yeah. in this, it's unfortunately the same. It's very formulaic. Very, yeah. But I'll, I'll say this, the style that they've added for the yes. graphics are amazing. They cleaned it up. They made it work for this time. And I, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Like, yeah. I want to make this one of the things that I finish. That's right. So aside from fighting monsters. There's quests. And who doesn't like quests? This girl right here. Yeah. You got like your regular quests where you can go around town, meet people. But when you do that, you just have to be warned, it can speed up the time in this game. That's what is, if you don't understand Persona, the thing you gotta really understand is that when you complete something, it can speed it up to the next day. So if you wanted to do something previously, unfortunately, if you completed a quest, it's gonna speed it up to the next day. Right. Right? Yeah. And I remember when I first played Persona, I was like, wait, 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 but I wanted to talk to that person, but I only had a choice to talk to the other person, and now I can't go back and complete that quest. Right. Yeah. And what they've added in this game is this girl called Elizabeth, who's a part of the Velvet Room. Welcome to the Velvet Room. We'll talk about the Velvet yeah. Room. And she has her own little side quest that you can complete yourself without even knowing it. So you could be fighting monsters, collecting items, and she's like, okay, so you completed that for me, you get this item, which makes it more fun and interactive. How splendid. And then, of course, you go into the Velvet Room, where you create your personas. Oh. And that's where the addiction starts again. <laughs> yeah, but you were telling me, like, you're like, oh my god, this song is starting oh to drive god. me insane. That the, oh, opera oh. singing. Yeah, oh my god. But it's beautiful. Like, the, the atmosphere in yeah. the Velvet Room has always been so unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the character. They keep to that same guy mm -hmm. who's always so creepy and weird. Oh, always. <laughs> always. Uh... Please choose the personas you would like to fuse. So the one thing that I will say about any Persona game, I've always loved the world. You really feel a part of it, the shopping centers, the interaction with people and just traveling around. Here you get to go into a world map where you can jump on a, a sky train and just enter whatever different malls or shrines you want to go to. Though it does have a like quick map. So instead of like, you know, clicking um, the train and going there and there, you can go into the quick map and just end up there faster. Yeah, fast travel. Which fast is travel, good. Yeah. which is wonderful. And what I love also about this game is that it always has like the shopping for weapons at the police station. Yeah. And that's just like, it's so ironically bad, but it's like, hey, you want to buy some weapons? And so you're <laughs> buying the weapons from I the know. cop. I running a little sale today. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And then on top of that, you can um, increase your social skills by like uh, doing karaoke. Right. And like your guy's in there like singing by himself. You're like, oh, that poor little guy. <laughs> and then you can eat burgers. You can meet up with friends. You can even have a part-time job, which mm. you really want to do. At first I was like, I'm not gonna worry about the part-time job, but you need it for money. Cause it, it's really hard. Sometimes you might not get a lot of money while you're grinding in those towers. But if you do the part-time jobs, you'll get some money increase. I just, I love this game. I've actually been playing it on a different console. Oh yeah, we, we have it right here. The PlayStation Portal. Look at that video. Yeah, I know, we're gonna get lots of reflections going on with the lights. Look at the, yeah. that beautiful light in there. What are, what are your thoughts about playing Persona 3 Reload on this thing? I think I'm glad to change up the scenery, honestly, because like you can be playing your games and yeah. then I can jump in the other room and play mine. After playing on this for six hours, however, <laughs> which was probably not the best thing to do, mm -hmm. my hands were getting so sore. Is it the, the placement I, of everything? I think it's the placement, the awkwardness of it all, but it's the screen that wins out yeah. of this because it's gorgeous. It's, it makes everything so vibrant and yeah. clear and there's no lag or anything. So I'm, I'm gonna continue on probably playing on this. Yeah. 
Um, aside from that, the game itself is wonderful. It's dark, which I love. Uh, the only downside is probably just going through the tower constantly yeah. over and over again. But that's a time just to kind of zone out and just also just enjoy the storyline of it all. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so the, the last game that I've been playing is a, is a real interesting one for me. And uh, yeah, I, I gotta dive back into the past. So I never had a Sega Saturn when I grew up. I was the one, I, well, Rob got one, Rob's oh, family okay. got one, and they enjoyed it, and I would go over there and enjoy it with them, and it was kind of fun. Sega! But I couldn't justify the price, and there wasn't enough games that I really oh, wanted. It was an expensive machine, and all of that. But Rob's dad ended up getting a game that would become super rare. We, wouldn't, we didn't know at the time. A game called Magic Knight Ray Earth. And it came out in 1997, okay. and he, he got this copy, and I went over there and I was like, oh, I marveled that. It was like an overhead, you know, action RPG, Ooh. based on an anime that was based on a manga created by Clamp. Uh, it was a very big uh, company then, uh, very well known. Magic Knight Rare Earth was like a magical girl story. Ooh. Like Sailor Moon. Ooh. Yeah, that's what you say, for sure. And uh, back then, we really liked this kind of thing. We're like, oh, look, this is cool, and all of that. And then, so the game came out, and I got to experience it over at Rob's place, and I, I thought it was, the graphics on it, the pixelated graphics at the time were incredible. And so I got a Polymega, you know, like about a month ago, and uh, it showed up, and so I have it's the only way to get it now. Like, honestly, there's no other way to play Magic Knight Ray Earth. I had to get a counterfeit copy. And oh, I'm, wow. And I'm, I'm not, like, Look super happy about that. The reason why I did mm. is because the game is goes for thousands of dollars. Well, it's how many years old, right? Yeah, no, but it goes for, like, it's like a super collector's item, and everybody's, Whoa. like, crazy. There's some versions of it that are worth, like, two to 3000 I believe. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's so nuts. So I finally got to play it, because I popped this into a Polymega, and I just wanted to play it. And what an experience. It, it was like, it was an experience. To, review, to like revisit it all again. Yeah. What it was, was it like? It, it was okay. And uh, the, <laughs> Oh my. I know, I know. <laughs> like, so it starts off and you get a, a beautiful pixelated, you know, anime intro, you know, with, with the girls and that's pretty cool. And then it cuts to the game and you're kind of walking around, you're in Tokyo. Then you get transported to this magical world. Here's the thing, the negative of the game for me. This is a big negative. There's so much talking. Oh no. No, 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 but it, it doesn't end. I noticed that too. You're like, it like allows you to walk from one place to another. And you're like, oh cool, I get to play. And then all of a sudden the talking begins again. Hello? Anybody home? Ugh. It was just that time period. This was brought out by Working Designs. Yeah. Did the translation on of it, you know, on it. And that was, that was kind of a novelty. That's why the game's so expensive now. Mm -hmm. A lot of Working Design stuff is expensive now. It appears we've been blown out of our world into another. Finally, I could play the game and it was pretty good. The controls oh. were really nice. You know, you can switch between your different girl characters. You can, all of them have different abilities. Some have like, you know, arrows they shoot. Others just have their swords. Right. And it was interesting. And here's something that I've left to the last minute, uh, just to that? pop up. It's it's kind of a weird deep dive memory for me. Oh, I love deep dive. Uh, well, kind of. It's kind of a surreal one okay. for me. So in 1997, I've talked I've talked about it before, but my, my dad passed away, right? Yeah. Which was really unfortunate. It's been a long time, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it now, you know, come to terms with it. But what, do you want to hear something strange? No. <laughs> so before my dad went to the hospital, I had the soundtrack to Magic Knight Ray Earth and it's so, it's so, no, but this is so, I had to go like get this out of a, like a tote in the back of a closet. I had to dig <laughs> this memory out. And I was listening to this the the week that he went into the oh. hospital. And so, the, no, but, but I like the music, but it's kind of like weirdly haunting. Yeah. So it's strange. I've only ever listened to the soundtrack. Right, I played over Rob's, but I couldn't ever remember the, my time with it. But I had the Japanese soundtrack for it, and so I kind of, I used to draw to this music all the time, and it was so weird to play the game with the, with the, the music, music in context oh, I see what you mean. to see where the music so actually real. fits in the game, yeah. and it was like, 
wow. And I kind of wanted to revisit the game because of that and go full circle with it. And it was an interesting experience. I mean, I would love it if they could bring out Magic Knight Ray Earth now and the working design stuff in general, uh, you know, Lunar and, and all Popful Mail, all the stuff they brought out. Bring it back out. I, I think it's licensing issues beyond reality. It usually is. It usually yeah, is. for With sure. These old games, right? Oh, yeah. Especially ones from 27 years ago. They're in a vault and they're never coming out. And that's why I say, like, I mean, pick it up anywhere that you can if you can't get it now. I mean, what else can we do? I can't pay $2,000 to play a game that would take it's me about. It's hard to justify that. Yeah, it's like an eight hour game to get through, too. Oh, gosh. No. It's like, it's, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Really fun to revisit an old classic, uh, especially in, in 2024 now and all that. So yeah, I, we had a lot of fun playing these games. We want to come in and, and talk about yes. them. Uh, Persona 3 Reload for Miss Kim, yep. you know, Unicorn Overlord for myself, <laughs> and a little bit of weird Magic Knight Rare from 1997. So guys, let us know down below, what are you playing? Are you playing some old game, a mm. new game? Let us know. So anyways, guys, until next time.